Alright guys, what is going on and welcome back to your New York Rangers B AGM mode. So I, I just waited a couple of days, I wanted to get your guys' comments in and I wanted to feel out how you guys were feeling about the restart because we had to restart, all the overalls were screwed and I'm done with overalls now, I'm absolutely done with them, There's I'm not changing anyone, I know some people are unhappy that this person is a little bit lower or this person, it's never going to be perfect but I'm happy with the way things are, we should be a competitive team here and uh, we do have a lot of things to work on. Uh, but we are, for the most part, doing very, very well. I have to get a couple of things out of the way, or we'll uh, talk about some stuff while we do some simulation. So uh, we're 29, 13, and 6, so we're doing pretty decent here. We're not doing too bad. Uh, one minor trade there, uh, BJ Crombean went to Pittsburgh for a couple of uh, random-ass prospects, I guess. But so I believe we're like third in the NHL behind Toronto and behind Calgary, so we're not not doing too bad at all. Uh, I mean, for goal wise, we're not we're not really up there. But there's there's people in the comments. I asked you guys, how, how do we spark our lines? Like, what is going on here? And people are saying you're playing Nash on his off wing, but I'm definitely not. He is a right wing, and I'm playing him on the right side. So that's where he's going. Hopefully, Nash can kickstart something here. I'm gonna go ahead and put Kreider on the first line and throw Zuccarello on the on the second line. Zuccarello has been he was injured for a little while. But he hasn't been the player I thought he would that he would be. Maybe he's holding down the first line. Uh, yes, he was injured, but hopefully Kreider can spark something here. He's young, he's big. The guy oozes with talent, so hopefully he can spark our first line here of Brassard and Rick Nash. And defensively, there's a couple of things, but we'll get some simulation started here, and then I'll go over some uh, some of your guys' comments. We'll get February out of the way here and just go all the way up to the trade deadline. We might actually get uh, two GM modes out to you guys. Today. Hopefully we can rack up some victories here, 5-1 against Florida. But uh, Rymo Tarki, he says, trade Cam Talit for Nail Yakupov. Makes sense since you have a goalie and you need scoring. Yes, that makes sense. Uh, that may be something we can look at. Um, but then again, do we? I feel like if we get a scorer, we have to play him on our top six. And as of right now, there's really no room uh, for anyone to squeeze into our our top six unless we get rid of a player so we trade cam talbot that's great talbot's a young goalie it makes sense he needs to go to, to a team like edmonton who needs a goalie in a really bad way huge game here against the leafs and we win 4-1 playing some good hockey here guys playing some good hockey of, of late getting some victories um but then again where do we slot uh where oh kevin klein has been injured February 24th. Okay, so it's only a couple days. I'll replace the... I'll get the assistant coach to replace him. And then, uh, should be, like, only a week or two. So, it's not too bad. Um, maybe less than a week. So, like, the 24th or whatever. But... Nail Yakupov, he has to play in your top six. If he's a scorer, I believe he has to play in your top six. So having a scorer on your third line doesn't really make sense to me when we're not scoring goals as it is. Sorry, looks like he's scoring a couple of goals here. I uh, had 22 where he had like 16 when we when we started this. So maybe the addition of Chris Kreider to the first line did help things out quite a bit. Uh, Kevin Hayes has been injured. Oh my goodness. We're getting hit with the injury bug here. Uh, but quickly, just to talk about this Yakupov thing, we would have to either move Zuko Zuccarello or Marty St. Louis, and Marty St. Louis is probably going to be the one to go, but I want to keep him. He's going to retire as a Ranger. He may actually retire after this year, so I don't really want to make any trades right now uh, to our offense, because I feel like it's okay, but so offensively, I don't think we're going to make any moves until the tr until the offseason because I do want to see if Marty St. Louis does re retire. If he, stay if he stays around for one more year, then we might have to think about dealing him. Uh, how many years do you have on his contract? He's only got one year left, so we may actually have to let him go to free agency or maybe trade him uh, sometime. I don't know. I kind of want to hang on to him right now. We'll go up to the, to the trade deadline. I'll put him on the block. If anything comes up, you know, I'll I'll. I'll definitely uh, take interest, but I think that leaving our top six the way it is right now is totally fine. Two 87s on the second line and a, and a 86. I feel like once we start rolling, we're going to be just fine, but I have to call a player up here uh, and it's probably going to be that Oscar Lindbergh guy, wherever he is. Oscar Lindbergh. Kevin Hayes had quite a bit of minutes for us here, but Lindbergh is going to uh, fill that void for right now and we obviously had to call up Chris Bork. What are you doing? Okay, so let's never trust our assistant coach ever. Uh, why? Why would you play Chris Bork on your 
defense. You can bring up Mike Costa. What are you doing? Okay, Chris Bork. Oh my god, what are you doing? What is going on? You are a fool, whoever my assistant uh, coach is. Why would you put him there? What a, what a loser. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so we're probably not going to make uh, four on four lines here. Let's just quickly go ahead and put him there. Honestly, it's only going to be for a couple of days because we're going to get Kevin Klein back, but the only move I think I'm going to make at the trade deadline is trading either Dan Boyle and a pick um, for maybe like a better third pairing defenseman, maybe like a shutdown guy. Uh, Brady Shea, that's fine. Assistant coach, and of course, Kevin Klein's available. Of course, that would happen. Let me just quit. Why is JT Miller there? What is going on? I don't know what is going on right now. Everything is just crazy, uh, but we do have to send down uh, we have to send down a couple players, actually. Oops, let me just go here. We have to send down. Who we have to send down? We have to send down Costa. Hopefully, it doesn't get claimed on waivers. That's the thing with calling people up in the whole waiver thing. He may actually get claimed. You know, he's 29. If he gets claimed, whatever. I don't think he will though. Ah, uh, yeah, I didn't even didn't even get claimed. That's that's kind of nice. Uh, now we can finally get some stuff done here. Jesus, injuries popping up and things that are things that are not allowing me to do the simulation. But uh, maybe trading or upgrading Dan Boyle. He's old. He's making a lot of money. I'd like to get someone quite a bit younger. So maybe trading like a third or like a second round pick along with Dan Boyle. I feel like get, oh jeez, all these things. I feel I feel like getting Dan Boyle's. Um, I feel like getting Dan Boyle's contract is gonna be the biggest thing. And Kevin Hayes actually out for five weeks, so that's that sucks. That is huge. That is really really bad news for us. So actually, what I'm gonna do is put uh, Limberg on the fourth line and bring up Dominic Moore. Uh, yeah, we definitely gotta bring up Dominic Moore, even though we're playing pretty decent right now. Two wins there. Had an uh, had an OT loss against the Arizona Coyotes, but losing Kevin Hayes for that long really really sucks. So. Let's go ahead and put more there. Lindbergh there. Everything's good. Golden, golden, golden. But almost up to the trade deadline here. I may look for like a, a more of a defensive defenseman for my third line to play alongside uh, to play alongside Kevin Klein. Uh, I mean, if you guys remember in Winnipeg, we were filled with two-way and uh, and uh, defensive defensemen. So we had players like uh, we had Jamie Alexiak who was awesome for us. He was really really good. I kind of want a player like that. So let's go ahead and edit our trade block here. I I will put on Dan Boyle. He's not worth much. He's got the big contract, though. Um, who else? I want to go ahead and chuck on Marty St. Louis just to entertain offers. Not saying that we're going to uh, totally get rid of him or anything. He doesn't have the trade value that... Uh, oh, fuck. I forgot to put Cam Talbot on there as well. I gotta put Cam Talbot on there. Um, trading block. Just to entertain offers. I'm not saying we're gonna move any of these players whatsoever, but if an offer does come my way that I uh, that I like, I will definitely have a look at it. Thing is, we could draft a goalie in the next couple of years, and they could be completely, and they could be completely ready by the time Lundqvist is ready to hang up skate. So I'm not worried about a backup goalie. We can find one. If we do decide to deal Cam Talbot here, maybe it will be to Edmonton in the offseason, but I don't think we're going to make any moves right now. Uh, teams, it looks like, not coming at us in the first uh, in the first hour of trade negotiations. And I mean, I'll have a look. So go ahead and put him on the block, uh, Dan Bull. Let's just quickly see what teams want him. See, not many teams. It's not going green. Uh, Minnesota wants him, but what defensemen do they have that we could snag up? I don't want to get someone that's going completely unrealistic. Like, Matt Dumba, obviously not going to happen. Uh, Jordan Leopold's kind of... Uh, it's actually not too bad. He's a little bit younger, 34. He's two-way defenseman. He's got a smaller contract, a one-way deal. Um, that's kind of a downgrade, considering the player that that Dan Boyle is. I mean, he's got 25 points for us, and it's not like he's playing bad. Uh, you know what? Maybe we'll keep Dan Boyle for this year. He's old, so there's potential for him to retire next year. Uh, and I'd totally be be all all right with that. But then I gotta ask myself: Is this a team that I'm prepared to go with into the playoffs? And as of right now, I gotta say, yeah. You know, there's a couple question marks, of course. Like every team, no team's perfect. But Marty St. Louis, one of those question marks. He's not playing bad, but again, he's not the player he once was. Uh, JT Miller, we got a bunch of young guys can coming up. Lots of potential guys. We got Jesper Fast. He should be pretty good for us. This Limburg guy. Uh, we got we got. 
got some pieces in in place, but uh, I'll go ahead and just quickly have a look around the NHL. If there's any prospects that are being given away that I could squeak out for a pick or maybe another depth player, I'll definitely do that. But as of right now, I don't think we're going to make any moves. So I'm actually having a look here, and one hole that I can definitely see, when I ask myself, is this a team I want to go towards in the playoffs, uh, I said yes, but then I kind of looked at it, and I was like, we could probably make a change to the fourth line, uh, and I kind of want to get a fourth line winger, because James Shepard is playing out of his position, he's a natural centerman, and just, I don't really, I like, I like having players in their natural position, plus the fourth line is a very important position for me, uh, I love having the grindy fourth line player. So it's either Kopecky. I could probably get Kopecky for a little bit cheaper than I could get uh, Scotty Upshaw. Let's check. Out, I just want to make sure they have good defensive awareness. 80, 80 for the discipline. Kopecky, 83, 82. So Kopecky might actually be a better option. Plus, he's a right winger, and we might not actually have to trade anything else. Probably just do. James Shepard straight up uh, for Thomas Kopecky, but that might be not a bad idea. We get to upgrade our fourth line. I think Kopecky is the is a pretty good option. Obviously, he's not the ideal fourth liner, but uh, you know, as of right now, it's what we have to work with. Where where a cap team, even taking three mil on for the next, uh, he's actually it's in a contract year, so it's not too bad. If it doesn't work out, we could just trade him or go to free agency. But I think this trade is the only trade we're actually going to make. Thomas Kopecky for James Shepard. Shepard's playing out of his out of his position, and Kopecky could use a new home in New York. Will this go through? It will not go through. You're pretty f you're pretty far away, really. It looks pretty even on the on the on the trade block there. But let me go back, and maybe I'll have to add like a fourth and a fifth, maybe just some random picks. Right, I'll give two fourths, one from this year and one from Ari and one from next year, which actually Arizona's pick. So two fourths and James Shepard for Thomas Kopecky. Come on, Florida, be nice to me here. Allow me to get this trade. I do have the trade difficulty on hard, so this is going to be uh, it's gonna be a wake up call for me to make trades anyway. So so James Shepard and two fourths for Thomas Kopecky. There you go. Thank you, Florida. The Florida Panthers fans are gonna be cheering in the streets. I don't know. It's just James Shepard. He's not that fantastic. But thank you, Florida. I like uh, that was a good deal. I'm happy that we made that deal happen. Uh, that's the one deal that I did want to make. Uh, that can go there. And now we can just go offense there and go ahead and put the new player, Thomas Kopecky, there. So that strengthens up the line a little bit. Uh, once we do get uh, once we do get Hayes back, it'll be there. And this will be Hayes instead of Limburg. But as of right now, this is how our playoff team is looking like. Just imagine Limburg be Kevin Hayes. So I am more happy with that. We're not going to do anything to the defense. You know, Kevin Klein's doing his thing. He's a good defensive defenseman. Got really good defensive awareness. I have no problem with that. Hasn't scored a goal yet, but he's a plus eight. That's fine. He's holding it, holding it down there. And, uh, Obviously, with Dan Boyle, we're going to see what happens in the coming months here. But I think that's going to be it for the trades. Just a couple other random trades. Uh, Matthias Ekholm, uh, I think he's... Uh Scott Hannon went to uh, went to Nashville for Kevin Fiala and a random prospect, I guess. So that's probably going to be it for trades for us anyways. Anything else happening doesn't look like it. Pretty quiet NHL trade a deadline here. But that's going to be it for this video. In the next one, we're going to get the rest of the regular season done and do a uh, do a quick little wrap-up. And this is going to be the, the uh, first GM mode you're going to see today. There's actually going to be two of them. Uh, but let's do a little bit of a, uh, let's do a, bit of a team update date here. Uh, player stats, check it out. We're going to get two GM modes today because I want to start the playoffs on the weekend. So, here's what it's looking like. Derek Broussard leading our team. 46 points. Nash has 43. So, maybe putting Kreider on the first line jumped it a little bit, but as of right now, I'm not happy with the way Rick Nash is producing. He's supposed to be our offensive leader. You know, he's supposed to be a 40-goal guy. And right now, he's playing like a $3 million player, not a $7.1 million player. So, we got to uh, gotta find a way to bump Rick Nash up. Jeez. Everything else seems to be doing okay besides Matt Zuccarello not having a very good year whatsoever. I get he was injured, but uh, yeah, not up to my standard.
standards whatsoever. I think it's the goal scoring is our issue, but I, I'm confident with the guys. I feel like Ryan McDonough, he's holding it down on the defense, playing great. So is Keith Yano. They're both playing awesome. I feel like we, yeah, we, we, ha we have a good mixture here in New York. Maybe it's not exactly what I want, but we're only in year one. This is a GM mode. you got lots of work to do. Uh, goaltenders looking like this. Henrik Lundqvist, I mean, in the running for the Vesna this year, playing amazing. 1.77 goals against average. Nine shutouts already. Guys playing absolutely unreal. But that's going to be it for this episode, though. God, look at Henrik Lundqvist. Oh, my God. Uh, that's going to be it, though, guys. Uh, hopefully, you liked the one trade there. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. That definitely strengthens up our fourth line. And then in the next episode, we'll get the rest of the regular season done. And then we will hop into the playoffs, hopefully. And then we'll have some videos out for you guys then. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.